this collector on the corner. Today's Saturday, and guess what? I'm not at an auction. Anyway, I've been working on cleaning up my mess and hoard. <laughs> I'm a little bit <laughs> animal or whatever you want to call it about stuff. And that's why it takes me so long to do stuff. I got this weights block here. Mm -hmm. And the sleeves ain't no good in it. And before I take it and put it up there in an old car or back of a van or somewhere, move it out from under his camping. Or, or take it to the junk man. Well, I'm going to pull the sleeves out <laughs> and I'm going to slather it with a little axle grease. Well, it's slathered pretty and good down right around wrap, there. Wrap it up with cardboard and duct tape and put it up where the dirt daubers won't get in it and where... In my estate sale, somebody can pull it out and say, you know, that's a greasy old engine. Anyway, so I decided I'd pull the sleeves out. Of it. So, ain't no so good. you've got an estate? I thought yeah. this was a well, mess. Well, my horror <laughs> auction when I died. Anyway, so I decided I'd pull the sleeves out of it. And I, <laughs> we talked about a wet sleeve the other day, but I don't know. There are people who show videos of Pulling the sleeves, but you don't get a good a view because it's in a tractor and they're, they're between you and the camera. But there's what that dry sleeve looks like. Got a flange on the top. Hold it still. See a flange? Yep, I see it. Okay. What you got to do, you got to have your washer. It's the same diameter, just a little slightly smaller than the outside diameter of that sleeve. Yep, I see it. And I got another washer that's the same diameter as the bore right here. Uh -huh. I didn't kind and of that centers out up in there. Sure. And what I did for stands is I took two pieces of pump pipe, cut them off, and I put them on couple studs. Okay, Got some washers there to keep them running the block. Thanks, thank you. Anyway. I guess. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to check this up. Okay. Where y'all can see it. Okay. Superman. Da, 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 da. See the oh, bottom wow. of that board? You know There's what? where I pulled that sleeve. There's, There's still a sleeve in, in there. Metal. You can barely see that little edge. But the crankshaft ain't in the way and all that stuff, so this would be a good one for video. All righty. Hope you're doohickey. You all need to hang around because I got a real doozy of a story. I oh, jeepers, I'm leaving. When my brother, if he watches this video, when my brother sees that, please can tell that story. He'll be ready to <laughs> drive all the way up here and Kill you? Commit bodily harm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, what you doing up there? Oh, you're putting, okay. putting your doohickey on. the top on. here. See, you're not completely... Well, I'm going to show that in a minute, honey. What? I had to move that. I don't know what you didn't have. Was you going to show that, that rim I just kicked out of the way? No, I'm going to turn this back over. Oh. Oh. You're falling off of your head. What I've got on the top. Okay. I've got the nut. This is thrust washer, not flat washer. Uh, you got the nut? Yeah. And I'm going to set this. If I can get that more. I'm going to set that just like that. I showed you the nut. Y'all. And see, it. it's centered up because of that mm -hmm. big washer I got in the middle. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look right here where my finger is, okay. if you wash right there, as I crank on this, Go ahead, get here. back a little, Debbie. I know. Just wrench, I big, long wrench. Don't need to get rinsed in the noodle. Yep. i got to turn it over a minute. Uh-oh. What I got. You done goobered up. No. It's spinning. Oh. It's... So what I'll do. Here. Kind of low. Tighten it up. I'll put that pair of ice Oh, in so when it. Put that nut on the bottom. You mean the nut? Yeah, there's a nut on okay, each end. Okay, there's a the nut. Paper. I showed you. you. See a spine threaded rod? Okay. It's got a lot of leverage to it. Okay. You can see it coming up. Oh, I see it coming up. I see it. I see it coming up. 
so I'll hold my foot against it. Well, I did it anyway, so you're just It'll get easier to... in just a minute. Because the more you pull, the less is holding in the block. Wow. Wow. That gives you gear rush of that fine thread. Oh, I thought it gave you muscles. If you use a coarse thread. I thought it gave you muscles doing all that yeah, spinning. Yeah, well, if you use a coarse thread bolt. <laughs> go, Grandpa, go. Go, Grandpa, go. It's slower. The coarse thread bolt be faster, but it ain't got as much power. But that sleeve's getting looser and looser all the time. Yes, I see it. You want me to pour some oil on it? No, I don't need no oil. Gas? So I'm going to take some old wax wool grease I got. Um, that's not oil? Here, you know, like you use your grease gun. I got something dirty. Mm. But I'm going to paint brush it mm. all over this block. Put the main cap something back on it, torque them down, and wrap it in cardboard. Mm -hmm. That'll keep mice and dirt daubers and moisture and everything away from it. Yeah, taking it to the salvage yard to keep all those critters yeah. away, too. Well, I seen a guy cross two in farm all tractors the other day. And what'd you do, cry? I cringed. Oh. I would have liked to took a plastic bat and beat on him and beat some sense into him. Oh, it does. It belongs to you. He can do what he wants. <laughs> of course. But I, I don't like him doing that, but... I'd fight for his right to do what he wants to do That's with right. his own personal property. That's right. That he bought and paid for, he can do what he wants. And see, I'm the same way. I can do what I want with your personal property that you bought. Yeah, because you're the boss, huh? <laughs> no, I wish. But I like dreaming. Uh-oh, I see it. It's about out. Yeah, it's about out. It's about out. We had, this is that block we had the heat on. Everything gets pissing out. Oh my gosh, something happened. It's loose. It's loose. Yay! Now I can back it. <laughs> That's okay. There's the sleeve out. Yay! Superman. Okay, now here's the story. Oh, oh Lord, here's the story. Don't oh, be a prop oh here. he even draw a guy. They draw a picture. My daddy. Had 120 acres hill ground. Uh huh. Had a little creek on it. Some uh -huh. little fields, and I used to farm them fields and had a cotton <laughs> allotment, and whatever, before he bought it. He never did have a cotton allotment. Other people did. Anyway, <laughs> our second grandson, Grayson, he's autistic. And I believe my daddy was too. We just didn't know about it thought about it back in them days but he even looked Grayson even uh, got a similar physical appearance to my dad anyway my dad was a carpenter mm -hmm. and he was okay mechanic and all his brothers they were either carpenters or mechanics or both all of them but my dad he was real Compulsive, obsessive was having everything square and level. You know, he had a transit he was always using. He wouldn't, he wouldn't just cut a board off. He had to have it level and this and that. So he had that 120 acres in it was three forties in a row. Well, the second forty had woven wire around it. And the old wire come up like this and went over and come out like this. And this was his first 40. And there was a big field here and there was a little field here and a little field here. So he decided he didn't like this over half a mile of old wire fence here. And what Cooking. it was, 
This was woods, hilly woods, rocky old woods. Yep, I remember. And there was a little field here. Yep. The little creek gets run down through here, run to the main creek. This was the main creek runs across this place. Uh-huh. So he decided he wanted a fence on 13, he made 1,320 feet, 1,320 feet. That's a quarter mile square. Uh-huh. Well, he measured across here. Uh-huh. And he got these two points. Uh-huh. He got his ladder and he climbed way up in a tree or had my brother do it, older brother. <laughs> And they put a red flag in that tree. And then he got down here. He had an old David Bradley chainsaw. I got one in there. old probably weighs 40, 50 pounds. And he started cutting every tree about 40 feet down through here. Trees. I knew he was going to build a fence there. Trees that I'm thinking. Make good fence posts. Anyway, I'm thinking that... Uh, we can nail a fence to them trees. That's what I said. Good fence posts. Live fence posts. No, uh-huh. Daddy cuts them all down. Uh-huh. And he decides he wants that straight. My brother, Dad works away. He work on a steel mill. But he come in on the weekends. And took him two or three weekends to get that straightened out. He strung a strand of barbed wire about right close to the ground. All the way across there. And about three quarters of the way across, he put... Dug it two and a half feet deep, put a great old big post right there. Mm-hmm. And there was a corner post here, and the neighbor had 40 acres here and right there. Mm-hmm. So we're up there, and Dad's clearing them trees, and the neighbor comes down there, and he's talking to Dad. He's on his side of the fence. A big old hall of post oak right here. And that neighbor starts telling what a good squirrel down that is, that he can go down there in the mornings and squirrel mm-hmm. season and sit there and them squirrels will come out, and he can kill two or three squirrels real easy right there. That's a real great tree. And it was on, How your, good a tree it was on it your dad's property, right? Yeah, it was on dad's side of the fence about 20 feet. Well, it's leaning where it'd fall over on neighbors if you chainsaw it. Uh-huh. Well, my dad gets to that tree, gets his extension ladder, and gets up there and puts a cable on it, snatch blocks, and hooks it to the tractor. And he cuts it down and pulls it where it fall over on him. Mm-hmm. He cut the trunk of it off as hauling made him two feed troughs out of it to feed the cow. Out of it. <laughs> but he did that because that neighbor bragged on that tree. If that neighbor's not <laughs> setting up not a tree, we left it alone. But he made these posts. Yeah, that's how your daddy was. All the posts had to be post oak and sharpened a certain way, you know, and all this. And just all the same height. So my brother's three years older than me. He put my brother's straw boss in this job of building this fence. Going 39 inches woven wire with two strands of barb on top of it. So we get out there and we're going to build that fence. My brother, he's a boss. He always was a little bit of a bully. He beat yeah, me up a lot. Yeah, I know. He... And I was a little bitty skinny runt. One of them guys that could skip. Suck his belly in and feel the back of his spine. <laughs> so, we got one jab bars like this, probably not as big as this one. Mm-hmm. And my brother bosses me and tells me to start jabbing holes down there. And they had to be spaced so far apart, too, you know, mm-hmm. every 10 foot. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, I'm down through there poking them deals, so I make sure that no two of them's 10 foot apart. They're 8 <laughs> foot and 12. And, uh, I keep, there was a hump in the ground there, and I keep kicking that wire back and forth so that instead of that wire being straight, it's like this. <laughs> and when I jabbed them holes in the ground, I'd jab them like this. I'd have to take a sledgehammer and beat on that. I'd jab them like this, or I'd jab them like that, or like this. They was all, none of them going to be straight. <laughs> and carry water from the creek up there and we watered and we got them holes and dad wanted them all at least 16 inches deep or you know <laughs> yeah so we built that fence and we got the tractor and trailer there and we back up there my brother gets on the trailer and he takes an old mall like this and he beats them post in the ground and I'm holding them <laughs> well he's beating on them you know uh-huh. And he drives all them posts. 
And of course they're like this and like this and like this. They're all different ways. And he and that fence is going like this, like a snake. And he didn't notice that. I did that on purpose. But I mean, your brother no. didn't notice it. No, he was. So, I don't know. He was high on power. He, he was <laughs> having so much fun mm -hmm. telling me what to do, mm -hmm. and me say yes, boss, yes sir, yes sir, boss man. <laughs> I was being your slave. <laughs> Anyway, so Dad was gone for a couple of weeks, and we got that woven wire up there and did just like Dad told us, put them two-by-fours with angle on it and hooked to the tractor and stretched it tight as a string, you know, and uh, <laughs> nail the bottom first and go up to the top, yeah. nail it to all them posts. And my brother never noticed I was having to pull that wire over <laughs> while he was nailing it to the post. Put the barbed wire on. My brother was so proud he got that job done. He, I think he was about 15 and I was about 12. <laughs> and Daddy comes in over the weekend. <laughs> and he looks at that fence. He gets up there and he stands on the hood of that old tractor. He's looking down that fence and it's doing all this. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's giving my brother some verbal abuse like you wouldn't believe <laughs> and everything <laughs> and here I am I'm, I'm tickled I'm biting my tongue to keep from laughing well, I'm tickled because you know how it is big brother's bully you hate his guts at that time <laughs> yeah. anyway it's fun <laughs> And my dad finally slows down and everything, and my brother looks like he's about to cry. And I said, the cows won't care what it looks like. <laughs> All of a sudden, dad looked, and he realized I was the culprit. I was the culprit. <laughs> I had to run. I mean, I had to run. <laughs> anyway. And, you know, oh. never realized, you know, he had. It has nothing to do with he it. Had a little you, bit of you, illness. you know, we all do. You made a pretty fence and your dad didn't but appreciate it. <laughs> when he got about just past 60, he'd had broken pelvis and he'd had a carpal tunnel syndrome and cataract surgery and. He had a hand that was crushed and didn't work just right, his right hand. And he needed to work. He was a union carpenter. And he'd been in the union for a long time. And I'd helped him build houses and stuff like that. I knew how to do carpenter work good enough. You know, good as you commonly say. So, I went down there and bought a union card. Didn't do apprenticeship, nothing. I just went down and bought a journeyman card. <laughs> a little local and then I transferred that car down there to the Memphis local so I go to the with daddy and we went down there and I, when you go down to that Memphis local they put the jobs up on the board and they got a rec room there at the union hall and it, you, when the job comes up on the board the first guy to the window gets a job well we went down there and they had plenty of work there's all mm -hmm. kinds of jobs out there and it's November mm -hmm. and they had one driving piling down on the Mississippi River. Daddy had drove piling and stuff before. He said, oh, that's just using the torch and this, that, and hooking them pins in. And I said, it's getting wintertime. Let me pick the job. And there was one that said, fixtures in the mall. I told that guy, I said, oh. I told that guy, I said, we'll take that fixtures in the mall. My dad said, well, I don't know what that is. I said, we're smart as anybody else. We can do fixtures in the mall, whatever it is. I said, we'll figure it out. So we went by there, and it was a famous Amos cookie factory store. Anyway, so Hi, Papa. we're uh, supposed to see this guy. I, I, I said, I'm like, you would get moved. Why was it you it was download weeks? So, uh -huh. uh, type in, in place and, 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 
We will. That, that's that Grayson that was giving me and Debbie tips on how to make a better video. Yes. He's got his own channel, Grayson the Grapey Boy. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so we go to do pictures and pictures in the mall, <laughs> and they said to make this guy at the famous Amos Cookie Factory store. So I went in there, and there's these buildings in the mall, and I'm looking around in there, and we ain't run across this guy. And blueprints was laying there, and I start looking at the blueprints and stuff. I told Dad, I said, let's go to work. There's a gang box there. Well, in that gang box, and we started working, started putting that stuff together, and there was a freezer needed to be bolted together, and I started bolting that freezer together, and Dad started putting uh, stuff on the walls that they had to fasten the walls with anchor bolts and stuff. This guy comes by there and he says, you my carpenter? Yeah. He said, I'll be with you in a minute. And we didn't see him no more the rest of the day. Next morning we get down there. He comes back. He said, uh, but everybody at the union hall said, you can't get along with that guy. You'll be back. Anyway, the next morning he come up. He said, which one of you guys wants to be foreman? And I said, he does. So dad was foreman. He gives us time cards. He says, he said, when you get down here, he said, I got a, a ponchos and some jean stores and some shoe stores. He said, when you get caught up here. So we did that famous Amos Cookie Factory store, did the ponchos and all that. And this guy, he he didn't care. As long as you was working, he didn't bother. He didn't say a word to you as long as you was working. So they built them malls. And put sheetrock all the way to the ceiling on metal studs. And when they did that, it's all wavy and crooked. Them guys get paid by the square foot putting that up. Well, we went to hanging them pre-hung doors. And my dad, he'd spend all day putting in two pre-hung doors because he wanted them level and square. Anyway, so... I just hang them where they would open and close. I didn't care whether it's level or square or whatever. I'd just take wooden wedges and get them where they open and close good and go on. But anyway, he'd get mad at me because I didn't hang them doors perfect. But that's just the way it is, you know. I've got my phobos and everybody else does too. We all got our little things that ain't just right with us. And the main thing. As long as when you go through life, you don't on um, purposely do other people out of the way or try to cheat them. Uh-huh. Or cover their property with junk. Or cover Debbie's property with junk. Uh-huh. And make her tray up. And really, it is Debbie's property because a lot of it. Because she worked at Walmart and she took 15% of her pay and bought Walmart stock. And she stole sold her Walmart stock. So we could buy that house in two acres over. She had over half the money, and I sold a bunch of old cars and stuff that I'd had for a long time. Old '56 Ford collection. No one stuff. asked you to. I know, but I sold them to where we could pay cash for that house in two acres. And Debbie went down to that lawyer's office and wrote a check for the entire amount. And left us two hundred and seventy dollars in the bank account. And but, you. But she didn't want all the money. Debbie avoids debt like the plague. Well, but anyway, I mean, if my brother ever watches this video, he's liable to drive up to Florida <laughs> to get after me. <laughs> Daddy sure got after him about that fence not being straight. And in the end, this little field here. Uh huh. This little field right here. Uh huh. It had old creek overflowed it, and all this stuff from the hill would run down on. That was really a nice sandy loam field. And Daddy was a disc in that field one day with an old M farm all with a heavy disc, and he took off and he went straight up here and he went up and down this fence. Uh -huh. Probably ten years later, up and down that new fence uh -huh. with the disc, knocked it down, wrapped it all up around the disc, and tore it all pieces. 
And then he went and got one strand of barbed wire and run it straight as string all the way across there and electrified it. Nah. Used electric fence. I knew your dad. He was, he could be just but, about like you. <laughs> that crooked fence aggravated him for 10 years. He wound it around that dish so bad he had to go down to the shop and take a cutting torch to cut the wire and stuff off the dish. <laughs> but he, he got mad. But anyway... I showed y'all how you pull a dry sleeve. Yep. I've got two of them out of this old tractor. Yeah, he got off track, but he got getting back on. I've been giving him the evil eye, and he ain't been a looking. Oh, well. I like to (laughs) flap my jaws. I know you like to flap your jaws. Some people like to hear it, and some people don't. Well, say goodbye and good luck to (laughs) y'all. Y'all have a good one, because I'm going to. I think I'll take Debbie to the creek this afternoon. We can sit there in the water and let the little fish nibble on the, our feet. Oh, I got plans for today, so you'll have to go do it yourself. Well, tomorrow Sunday we can do it. Oh, Sunday. I want to go to the creek. Sunday, Sunday, creek. fun day. We can uh, do a video down there at the creek. Well, anyway, y'all have a great day. It's Saturday. It's nice. Get outside and enjoy the sunshine. Take your iced tea out, sit on the porch or whatever floats your boat, and get outside and have some fun. Enjoy a cold beverage. Yeehaw! Thank y'all, and you please like and subscribe and comment below. Bye!